Have you started playing Splinterlands yet? If not, then what are you waiting for? Anyway, if you have started playing, then you might be a bit overwhelmed. It is like any collectible card game where you have to deal with a card's multiple stats. That being said, there are a plethora of builds and deck combinations that you can do. If you're really that good, and if you're that lucky, your deck builds can annihilate the enemy. There are builds or strategies that can get shared and people can use it. Keep in mind as well that you need to access these cards, so it boils down to buying or renting the cards. One particular strategy is utilizing water elemental cards. Here at the Game Mag, we've collected a ton of data regarding what you can do to implement this water deck strategy, and we're here to guide you at every step of the way. Number 1. Why the water strategy? While you're free to do whatever build and strategy you want, using water cards can be a good idea. Water cards are generally attuned to magic. This means that your damage will rely pretty much on cards that have strong magic stats. Keep in mind that not all water cards rely or excel at magic. It is just a norm that majority of them are good in that field. One advantage of magic attacks is that they never miss, at least at the time of this video. Another advantage is that magic bypasses armor dealing more damage since it isn't reduced. A disadvantage of using water cards is that the speed is generally average to low. You can be like a glass cannon where if your damage cannot defeat the enemy right away, then you might lose. However, if planned correctly, you can easily defeat your enemy with enough damage output. Using this strategy can guarantee early wins in lower ranks, but later on when enemy cards can get abilities like Magic Reflect, then you're in trouble. The next tips on this video will feature what cards you should get and certain strategies you can implement. Number 2. The Summoner Card Naturally, you need to pick a Summoner card, and since this is a water strategy, your best bet is Auric Stormbringer. First of all, Auric is free, and his ability is a good thing to have, especially to players that are just starting. His ability is to grant plus one to the magic stat to all of your cards. Considering that we'll be using a lot of water cards with magic, then Auric's ability is a definite boon for us. The best thing to do with Auric if you plan on continuing this strategy is to just upgrade him. The stronger he gets, the stronger your other water or magic cards become. The investment as well isn't that big, and you can win a lot of matches ahead of time. Ulrich is good, but if you are the kind to spend money, then why not get Valnamore, who is another Water Summoner card. Valnamore still gives the plus one in magic, but he also gives plus one in speed and health. Your cards are getting three stats boosted, but as we said, this guy is a bit expensive. You can rent him if you want, but Valnamore is like a situational case. The other thing is that his mana cost is a bit high, so you might not have the resources for it. Number three, the tank cards. The next set of water cards we'll tackle will be the tanks. The tank cards are, of course, the ones that will soak up damage, and there are a couple of good water tank cards out there. Try to get any or all of them to make a compelling and versatile lineup. We'll start first with the Spineback Turtle. This card is your starter-friendly tank. It's cheap and has good defensive stats that will allow your damage cards to set up their moves. It also doesn't cost that high in terms of mana and has the Thorns ability. The next one is the Lobster Domus, which is actually an attacking tank. It has nice tanking and defensive abilities, but it can be a good damage dealer when paired with the summoner cards Alric and Vanamore. The added plus one to magic can increase the Lobster Domus's damage tremendously while being defensive. The Frozen Soldier is another good one with good defensive stats, and it has the shield ability as well. If you are able to spend a lot of money, then one of the best water card tanks would be the Sea Monster. This beast of a card has high HP and defense, and not to mention having a healing ability. If it isn't killed yet, it will regenerate HP during battle. It is a bit expensive though, but if you can afford it, get one. Number 4. The Damage Cards Let's now get into the damage cards that will deal damage. The Enchanted Pixie and Ice Pixie are two good magic cards to have. Buffed with Auric's ability, their magic stats go up to two, and these two cards are very cheap to use. They may not have a lot going for them, but for low mana and early game damage, these two can pack a punch. Adding the Mischievous Mermaid or Magi Sphinx is also a good combination. They are better versions of the Pixies since they have more damage. They cost a little more, but not being absurdly expensive, and they need more money. These two are perfect for climbing up the higher ranks or just demolishing it in bronze. For a bit of more damage, you can go for the Phantom of the Abyss or the Coral Wraith. The Phantom of the Abyss is indeed a good choice, but costs more mana and a little bit more expensive, but worth the investment as it also has fast speed and the abilities of flying and dodge, which are perfect for melee attacks. 
The Coral Wraith is more on the sneak aspect, rather being the upfront damage dealer, which is perfect for those pesky cards in the enemy deck that just won't die. If you really want to spend a lot of money, go for the Ruler of the Seas. The Ruler has high magic damage with the Blast ability, and paired up with the Summoner cards, it will be a great source of damage. It is a bit expensive than the others if you want to use one. Number 5. Support Cards We'll finish off with this list by adding the suggested support cards. You still need to keep these cards in mind and not just focus on damage entirely. The Crustacean King is a good addition to your support cards because it also acts like a tank and capable of dealing damage later on in the higher levels. It has a healing ability, allowing it to regenerate per round. The Water Elemental is a nice support because it will heal your other cards as long as it isn't alive. The heal may not be that impressive, but it can help keep some of your cards alive for a longer period of time. Try upgrading this card when you have the resources to do so. You get more heal and it can last longer in battle with continuous upgrades. A good thing about the Water Elemental is that it can survive sneak attacks and won't succumb right away. The Veneri Wavesmith could be good as well because it has a buff ability that will put a shield on your cards adding to an armor. It makes everyone a bit tougher, but this card is a bit pricey, but not that high. It's a good purchase if you can afford it, and the mana cost on this card isn't that high to begin with, so perfect for the low ranks but gets better the higher your rank becomes. The Albatross is also good because it is a weaker version of the Crustacean King, but cheaper. Now that you have a basic concept and understanding how to use this water strategy, you just have to find the means to get the cards on the list. Following and executing the strategy is a different story even if you manage to get the cards. That's it for now and tune into the game mag for more content regarding Splinterlands and so much more.